Uh, today our discourse is uh, cosmological argument in the studio. I'm with uh, Baba Tulangosi. He's a historian and also a theologian uh, from the Adventist Church. Uh, Baba Tulangosi. Yes, sir. Welcome to uh, Cosmological Thank Argument. You very much. Would you please uh, greet our viewers at home? Hello there. My name is Tulan Kosi. I live in Soweto. Thank you. A full member of the Adventist Church. I'm a, I'm a born yeah. Adventist. I have um, almost seven pastors attached to me biologically. Okay. My so, father too was a pastor. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the Adventist? The Seventh-day Adventist Church, like other um, <clears throat> movements, religious movements that arose in the 19th century United States, has been marked by the fact that it has, among other things, consistently existed. Some fell along the way. Adventism begins not as a church, but as a movement in 1844. Okay. Um, there, was a, there was a man called William Miller who had been studying the Yes, the Bible seriously, particularly the book of Revelation and Daniel. And he came to the conclusion that um, something might happen before he dies. Okay. And, and ultimately came to the conclusion, to the, to the idea that in 1844, mm -hmm. Jesus might come out of the sanctuary okay. in heaven okay. to this earth to collect uh, his saints. But... Um, that couldn't happen. We call it the 1844 disappointment. Okay. Yeah. The great disappointment. The great disappointment. Okay. Yeah. And uh, here in Africa, when when did Adventists uh, uh, start their branches in, in in Africa? Adventism landed here in the in the late 19th century. 19th well, century. Okay. Yeah, between, the, between 1880 and uh, the beginning of the 19th century. Okay. Yeah, of the of the twentieth century, okay. and um, we are available to all to all racial groups. Of course, there are dynamics. Okay. Yeah, here and there that might arise as we discuss. Yeah, and who are the official founders of the Adventist? But I'm talking about uh, people like Joseph Bates. All right, Joseph Bates. Jesus, yeah. Joseph Bates, uh, James White. James White. Yeah. They, they were in the first group. They okay. were in the first group. Uh, James White with his wife, Ellen G. White. Yeah. James. Uh, yeah, yeah. Some were. There was a movement, you just it called the Sabbath Connection. Okay. James White belonged to that group. All right. And, and Joseph Bates. And when yeah. the, the Advent, Advent movement, moved further into popularity. Okay. Some of the people moved in. But because they had the wrong placement of the second coming of Jesus, yeah. prophetically, yeah. The, 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 the 1844, what you call the 1844 disappointment, exploded the membership. Okay. And a few people remained okay. to, to move into what later became the second coming of Okay, when you talk about the great uh, disappointment, 1844, yes. 18, 1843 to 1844, great disappointment. Uh, uh, what is all that? Was it prophecy? Do you believe it? Do you still believe in prophecy? Adventists are, are strong believers in a, a prophecy present in this catalogue. Okay. So, William Miller, was he a prophet? No, not necessarily. He was a student of scripture. But he's the one who came with the prophecy of uh, a, the great disappointment in 1844 yeah, he, that Christ is will come the second. He will prophesy about the second coming of Christ. Right. He initially was reticent about talking loudly about this thing in public because he feared that he might be considered a lie. But as more people gathered around, 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 around this movement, there is something else that made the movement flourish. In 1833, based on a prophecy in the Bible, stars fell all, all in parts of the North, North, North America, which, which Jesus had uh, prophesied in Matthew 24. Yeah. And people then said, the, the, the Bible is valid. Okay. Here we see the signs in the study events. Yeah. And, and the large, and, and of course some of them fell on the way. Yeah. Ellen yeah. White then became a leading personality in that not long after the movement began, 
He started experiencing visions and messages from above. Uh, William Miller, do you think the prophecy that uh, William Miller made was off at a tangent? Not necessarily. It, it, was, it was valid in terms of time, but it was not valid in terms of event. But do you know that people can prophesy off at a tangent? It's a fact. Let me tell you something else that Adventists generally don't talk about when they witness to other people. Uh, in the book of Revelation, John is given a book. And, and he, he, the, John the Revelator? John the Revelator, yes. Okay. And, and he eats this book. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, it tastes in his mouth, but later when it gets to the stomach, it's bitter. Yeah, okay. Adventists. Adventists interpret that incident as a prophecy around 1844. Okay. Because okay. they were all, you know what happened? People sold their businesses, their farms, and they gathered in various places in the United States waiting for Jesus. That's why it's called the Great Eater. Members of the Adventists, they are accustomed to quoting Ellen White. At all times when we talk to them, <laughs> yeah. they'll say Ellen White says this, mm -hmm. Ellen White says this. Why? It looks like you interpret the Bible uh, through the writings of Ellen White. Not necessarily, but uh, there have been excesses. There have been excesses. Uh, yeah. there, there, is a, there is a strand of members who, who are so rooted in Ellen White's writings, they, 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 almost, they, almost claim, they almost use the Bible as a support of Ellen White. Yeah. And yet Ellen White should be used as... Ellen White in her own writing said, stop thinking that what I write is authoritative. Go to the scriptures. Ellen White always told members, go to the scriptures, they're the ones that have the very truth. Yeah. So this is a misuse of Ellen White. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. What about people who say... Uh, the Adventist church, it's a cult church. Okay. How do you answer that? That, that was common in the United States until, until the late 50s. Yeah. yeah a, lot of, a lot of people viewed Adventism as a cult. Even now, there are remnants of non adventists who believe that this church is a cult. But <clears throat> some, people then, some people then studied Adventism. Yeah. Formally. It was a decision that was made for And they discovered, you know, these people are brothers and sisters. And so the cult tag is dead now in theological, theological circles. Mm -hmm. Yes. We are now a church. In their thinking, a very church. People say you are highly respected in the Adventist, within the Adventist church. I have a very serious question about the Sabbath. Do you, do you keep the Sabbath? I, I tend to keep the Sabbath. You yeah. attempt to keep the Sabbath. Yeah, I'm not perfect. Yeah, I, I do what I do what, what God has said. Okay. Yeah. But now it, it sounds like when I speak to people from your church, it sounds like they exalt the Sabbath uh, more than Christ. Uh, if, if you if, okay, let me put it straight. Let me shoot straight yes. with you now. If I don't keep the Sabbath, will I spend eternity with God or not? In her writings, and I'm quoting exactly yeah. Ellen White says. They are many children of God in pagan cultures. They will be saved because they will beat their parents. It's like uh, the Adventist church is emphasizing the Sabbath, that if you don't keep the Sabbath, then you are not holy. If you don't keep the Sabbath, you're not going to spend eternity with God. It's more about the Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath. We, yes, we are Sabbath keepers, but it is wrong for us to think that somebody who goes to church on Sunday is totally lost. Okay. Yeah. Because Sabbath keeping does not save anybody. It is obedience to Jesus Christ. Okay. But Jesus is the a king of the Sabbath or not? In the Bible it says he's the Lord of the Sabbath. Lord of the Sabbath. He's but, the, but, what does that mean then? It means that in heaven the Sabbath is recognized within the creation model. Yeah. Right. But this does not mean that anybody who is not an Adventist will be. In fact, let me tell you something, uh, uh, Dr. Pule. There, 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 there are more people who will be saved when Jesus returns than Advent. We're a small minority. Do you know that in South Africa we've, we've hardly hit a million? Now, you can't tell me that all these other Christians, Methodists, yeah. Zionists, Presbyterians, are going to be lost. God does not work that way. Now, here's another question. 
When a person dies, where does he go? I don't just believe in the uh, mortality of the soul. Yeah. We believe that when I die, everything in me dies. Okay. There's, there's nothing ethereal that comes from me that moves around. Uh, because I can quote a scripture that says, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It's a fact. Yeah, and then I can say to you also, uh, there's a, a parable, if you call it a parable, of Lazarus and the rich man. Uh, Lazarus died and went to paradise, and this, uh, the rich man died and went to Hades. How do you say when the Bible? How do you say when the Bible says the dead know not anything? Yeah, uh, that, that's that's another that's another topic. Yes. That's another topic. But now, uh, if if you died today, you you not going anywhere, right? But now, yes. Do you have, according to your belief? Do you have soul? Do you have body, soul, and spirit, or you just have body and soul? I've got a, a combination of all. But when I die, all life ceases. Nothing goes to heaven. Okay, fine. fine. Otherwise, okay. there should be no resurrection. Okay, fine. All right, let's go back to your eschatology. Your eschatology is very different from uh, other denominations. Okay, uh, when you talk about the events of the second coming of Christ and after, uh, where do you start? You start with millennium. Well, can you give us a, a little bit about your your eschatology? Eschatology is based initially, or let me say, primarily around Matthew twenty-four. Yeah, that, that, that chapter lists whatever what will happen before Jesus comes. Yeah. Indicators of the fact that. The, the, the coming is nearer than in the past. But of course... Okay, you believe in the second coming I believe in the coming of Christ. You believe, and in, in 1844, you also believe that he was coming. But it was the erroneous. It was erroneous. It was so erroneous. I had right yeah. to correct the... Uh, to correct yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I can't... It, it, so, you're saying to me it was a mistake, right? Yeah, it was an error. It, it was an error. The Son of God says, yeah. no one knows the day and the hour and so on. And the Father alone knows. Only the Father. Okay. So let's go through the events uh, of the second coming. You you believe in rapture? Do you have rapture? No, no. Adventists don't, don't believe in rapture. Adventists don't believe in rapture. You believe in the uh, um, the judgment seat of Christ? We believe that there's judgment seat in heaven. Okay. You believe in white throne judgment? What's that? You see, there's a deep white throne judgment that's where uh, God judges people. And uh, uh, according to what the Bible says that you read, and it says it, God is going to uh, judge people and the books will be open if your name is not found in the book of life. You'll be cast into the lake Advent, of fire. Advent, I want to hear what Adventist says. Adventism about. has a composite okay. view of that. We don't, we don't have a theology that says there's judgment there, judgment over there. To us, judgment is the it's composite okay. reality. But do you believe in hell? We do believe that after after, after the millennium, okay. God is going to light the strongest fire in the universe to burn sinners. You believe in the adversary? The existence of the devil. Yeah. Oh, yes, he's busy. And you also believe that he was created by God? Yes. And when God created him, God knew that he was going to be a devil? No, he did not know. He did not know. So there are things yeah, that... There are things... There are that, things that, wait, wait, wait. There are things that God so, foresaw. Yeah, you are trying to say to me there are things that God does not know. I, with I, his phone knowledge. Or you want to fix that? Yeah, I want to fix that. God, God did not foresee in the, in the manner in which you and I would understand foreseeing. But when, when he noticed that the devil was en beginning to entertain strange ideas, they, they, they gave him grace. Yeah. I mean, look at this. You know, the other day I was, was complaining to myself. I was saying, why has God delayed so much when to destroy this guy? Why did you trouble with that? I was just, that's a lame-ass yeah. okay. talk. Yeah. I was okay. worried over the mess in the world. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would say, if it was I, I would have not eliminated this guy. Yeah. You, according to your doctrine, God created the, uh, the, 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 the planet, the planet Earth and the universe. In six, in, literal days. in six literal okay. days, okay. And what happened on the seventh day? God rested. God rested. Yeah. Was he tired? He wasn't. That's why it doesn't say he went to the holy day. He rested. When, when, when you say rest, what do you mean? 
Be, because what? with me, if, if I rest, I rest because I'm tired. And now because you are a Sabbath keeper, mm. you rest on, on the Sabbath, right? Yeah. You rest. Yeah. And God rests on, on the Sabbath. In the human sphere, there could be tiredness in the human sphere. But the rest that is in the, in the book of Genesis and Revelation elsewhere has something to do with the recuperating spirituality, resting from labor that belongs to this world and for focusing on the creator of the universe. Okay. Yeah. We don't rest because we are tired. Yes, we might be tired, yeah. but tiredness yeah. does not lie at the center of suffering. Okay. Do you believe in God? I once did not believe. Now I have full evidence okay. that there is a God. There is a God? Yes. Okay. Can, you, can you give me a description? Because we have pictures of a white God. Um, I mean, uh, European exegetes depicted God as a white person. That's, that's one is is great, God a human being? That's one of the greatest falsehoods and heresies that you and I and other African thinkers or leaders of, need to correct. Because there's, they, <coughs> look, at, look at the contradiction. I'm, I'm, I'm going to add to, 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 to the location. Look at this contradiction. In, in European or American created literature, Jesus is white, the angels are white, yeah. but the super angel is black. Yeah. Why is the devil, why does the devil look like an African? Yeah. There, there's an oddity here. Yeah. There's something inconsistent. Okay, Even Adventists do this. Okay, I, 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 I hear you. Yes. I, I hear you. So, um, you have studied theology, right? Okay. White theology or black theology? Not necessarily. I studied biblical theology. Uh, but you went, I mean, you have a, you, Adventist has schools yes, and universities and seminaries. Yeah. But, okay. But and, and you're once a teacher, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, the, the question is the material that you were using uh, at the university, is it, uh, were you teaching what is written by white, your your, your, let, me, let me use uh, your exegesis, books of exegesis, and your, the way you interpret scripture, your dictionaries were written by Africans, or your commentaries were they written by Africans or Europeans? Fine. The large bulk of Adventist literature is created by white people in North America and in Britain. Okay. Let me say in the Euro Western world. So, so, so Adventist, with Adventists, you're teaching white theology. Not okay, let me go. They, they will not allow you to say that. Okay. Yeah, this is. I, I'm asking you. Yes, yeah, you're asking yeah. me. Oh. Uh, there are people within the church who argue that Jesus is European. Yeah. But there's an, an uprise now, both in North America among Black Adventists and in South 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 Africa, that that is. That, that is through jettison, jettison, getting rid of this false ethnology in the Bible. Yes. Some of us are now writing very boldly that Jesus was never European. Yeah. He was an African, okay. born by an African woman and so on. Yeah. So, so, so I need to admit to you that Adventists have been deceived by white leaders. Okay. But of course you said you don't believe in hell, right? No, it's coming. No, it's coming. coming. There's no hell now. No. And you don't believe in the paradise, that there was paradise, that there was uh, the, 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 sh the shower. But paradise exists, but, exists. but the world gets into it now okay. when Jesus returns. Okay. What happened, people to, like, let's say Adam was, a, Adam died, right? Well, what happened to him? Where did he go? He went to the earth. He went to the earth. Okay. Why do we die? We sinned. We sinned? Yeah. When? Anything that has sinned is, well, when did you is, sin? is mortal. Well, when did you sin? I said the day I thought about the mistake. Okay. Let me let me disobey my mother. Uh, uh, let me do something. Have you inherited wrong. sin? All of us have got an inherited inclination sin. to sin. sin. Okay. And, and we, might, we, might, we might not have sinned, yeah. but we have got a bend to us doing it. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm enjoying this. Yeah. I'm enjoying talking to, to, to people of your level. But now, well, the question is, of us, I'm repeating this question. Why do we die? We die because of the fall. Sin. Of the fall. Because of the fall. The Adamic fall. Okay. Where does death come from? It comes from. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah, is it is it coming from the tree that giveth knowledge of what is good and bad? Not Did this, it come from that? Not this. God says the sin that the 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 the, the, uh, the soul that sinned shall die. Death is inherent in sin. God did not cause death. 
The, the power of sin leads to death, to destruction. Okay, within but, but, it, the, the tree of knowledge, the tree that giveth knowledge of good and bad. Right. As an Adventist, do you believe there was something like that? I believe in that. Okay. And you also believe in the tree of life, of course. That these two trees were planted by God in the curse. Yeah. And you also believe that death came because of man eating that tree? Okay. You believe that? I believe that. Okay. Okay, what about the scripture that says, listen to me very carefully here, Bongos. The scripture that says Jesus died before the foundations of the earth. Where did this death come from? Because now there was no tree. tree. And the, the, there was no fruit. He died before the foundations of the earth. And now you, the Bible that you read, and then when we read it, it says we die because we ate the tree that was in the garden, the tree that giveth knowledge of what is good and bad. And on the other hand, it says before the tree was planted. When you say before the foundations of the earth, Jesus died. I'm confused. Can you help the people here? I hear you. Here's the one thing about God. God is able to see tomorrow before it occurs. Yeah. Yeah. You and I don't want to get in tomorrow. We are just hoping that we wake up in the morning and go to the shop. But God sees further than us. Yeah. God, God, God. That's why he designed the plan of salvation. Because, because the battle in heaven had already started. Yeah. The battle in heaven had already started. Yes. Yeah. So when we go to heaven, what are we going to do? There's a lot we're going to do. Okay. I, I just believe that we're going to have it first as a reward of righteous living. Okay. Two, we'll have the, we'll have the privilege to travel to unfallen worlds. Okay, fine. Yeah. We're left with two minutes here. Before we close, I want to ask you this very important question. Do you believe that God is the creator? Certainly. Certainly. I was also an atheist, by the way. You know, you told me that. Yeah. If there's no creation, is he still the creator? And is, is he still God? He's still God. If there's no creation, yeah. he's still God. He's still God? Yeah. He's what still the creator. Existence? How can you be the creator when the created is not there? Because there was a time when the created was not there. Yeah. There was a time when there was Jesus and there was the Trinity. Yes, no, but, but in the far distant past. I, know. Yes. I agree with you. I'm fine with that. The question that I'm asking you, I want an answer. If there's no creation, is he called God? God does not need validation from his creatures. From his creatures? No. But he created. He, you call him the he creator. He created because he wanted to share the, every, the universe, the joys. If there's no creation, let's put creation one side. No creation. Let's put the universe and everything one side. And just say there's no universe, there's no creation. Is he still called God? He's still God. Who calls him God? Himself. Himself? Yeah. How did he know that he's God? He's self-knowing. Self-knowing? Yes. Where did he come from? That's the question. When I must answer for eternity. For eternity. Is, is the Bible complete? Can I show you? On this one? one? Yeah, sure. One day when we get to heaven, I think there will be a peak of it and say, Baba, just tell us, where do you come from? Because we are children. Our brains are too far. They need to struggle. But go on, go ahead. You know. Now, fine. Well, we're, we're talking about uh, God and, 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 and creation and the creator and the created and, and, uh, and where does he come from? And uh, he, uh, Jesus Christ, is he a Jew in heaven? Is he a, a, a white person in heaven? That's a question I'm asking. Can we discuss that? Because it's a big topic. But one, one, should we? Should we but, but there's something in the book of Revelation yeah. which depicts Jesus with bronze legs. Yeah. The bronze is not white. Yeah. Yeah. And then what kind of hair? It also depicts his hair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We hair. Yeah. Like, like, like sheep. Yeah. 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 So, well, I'll, I'll move away a little bit from that. Um, goes, I, 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 we are just about to close. Um, we, 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 we spoke about creation and we spoke about the creator. And <clears throat> we spoke about death. Uh, 
You did not you did not really answer me correctly. You did not give me the answer that I want about death. That the scripture says Jesus died before the foundation. I'm repeating myself. He died before the foundations of the But now, where does this death come from when you say Jesus died before the foundations? And that is this this is something that is confusing our viewers out there. I, I, I think when the Bible discusses that. It uses it within the spectrum, first of the advent of sin, but and 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 how Jesus surrendered Himself <clears throat> to our condition of mortality, but He did not die in the sense of going to the grave. The plan was that one day He would need to die for His people. So when we say He died from the foundations of the earth, even before there was sin. Um, it's a statement that we need to re-examine in the context of the rebellion in him yeah. by the devil. Okay. Was the Bible whitewashed or not? Certainly. This this is the last question. Certainly though. not. Certainly not. It was people not. People have tried it. Uh, it was not whitewashed, right? The people have tried okay. it. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about the Council of Nicaea. Okay. Three twenty-five. AD. Yeah. Yeah. Three two five A.D. Yeah. Did why did uh, Constantine or guy organize bishops to come and decide what goes into the canon? Yeah, why did he do that? It's because Europeans historically had wanted to use the Bible to conquer the world. Okay. Yeah. They they knew that the Bible belonged to Jews who were dark skinned, our forefathers. Oh, yeah. And they then fiddled with it. Uh, because the Council of Nicaea was his, his historic. So the the, 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 the the Bible is incomplete? No, it is complete. It's complete. Okay, then I'm going to challenge you. The Ethiopian Bible has 88 books. Right. Your Bible has 66 books. Right. Why? Let's let's go to that in another uh, discussion. Another discussion? Okay. Okay, I'm going to have another session with you, and then we'll talk about that. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Babtula yeah, Nkosi. Uh, it was good talking to you, asking you some questions. Uh, some of the questions, really, you answered me, but there are other questions that uh, you did not really um, hit the nail on the head for me. Because yeah, for me, especially when it comes to death, you know. And I mean, but but you're but, but, <laughs> but you but you're an amazing person. You're an amazing person, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. And God bless you.